How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe, and today's video is about Google's keynote presentation that they made at Google I.O., that's their developer conference, and every year they announce all sorts of new stuff that's gonna be coming up in the next year and stuff they've been working on. And let me just say, there's actually some really awesome stuff they announced. I was pretty surprised. So we're gonna go over the best stuff. It was like a two hour presentation. We'll try to condense it into a little bit shorter than that. So let's get started. The first general topic they talked about was artificial intelligence and deep learning, which is a big part of what Google has been doing recently to introduce new features to their products. So one example they did was in Gmail, they did auto completion, like a predictive text thing. So it can kind of predict what you're gonna say in an email so you'd have to text less. Also in Google Photos on your phone, it's going to predict kind of what you might want to do with those photos. For example, sharing with friends that are also in those photos. And also if there is a photo that's a bit darker and clearly underexposed, it'll give you a one click option to fix the brightness, that sort of thing. And it'll even give you the option to colorize black and white photos, which is pretty crazy. And the next usage they had for deep learning was for introducing new voices to Google Assistant. They actually have six new voices they're gonna be rolling out. So before, what they had to do was have one person go into a studio and say all sorts of different phrases, probably took forever, but now they're using this technology called WaveNet, which apparently can take a much smaller sample from a voice and then kind of warp that into literally any word and make it sound natural. So they're using that to introduce six new voices that were previously unavailable in the Google Assistant. And it seems like they didn't need to go through the entire old version of recording every single possible word. Instead, now they can literally form the words at an individual part of the word basis. Further with conversations, they wanna make Google Assistant a lot more natural, so what they're doing is you no longer have to address it multiple times for every single question. I'm not gonna say it so your Google Home doesn't go crazy, but you know how you have to address it for the first question, and then if you wanna ask a follow-up question, you have to say it again, but now it'll actually keep listening to see if you ask something else, and then continue that conversation, and it's smart enough to tell whether you're still talking to it or not. They're also introducing a feature called multiple actions, which will allow you to basically combine requests, multiple ones into one phrase, so it will do both things, and maybe even be able to fetch different types of information and multiple questions at once, and give both questions back at the same time. Another cool thing they're doing is introducing smart displays. So right now, Google Home obviously is voice only, and then you can use the one on your phone as well, but they're gonna introduce a kind of thing like you had the uh, Amazon Echo video unit, now they're gonna have something like that for Google Home made by a few different manufacturers, so you can see the weather, watch videos on YouTube, that sort of thing. I think it's not a surprise that they're introducing that, it's really just a matter of time. But finally, here's probably the craziest part of the whole presentation maybe, was the ability to ask Google Assistant to call businesses and make appointments for you. So they actually did an example where they asked Google to call and make a hair appointment between 10 and noon. And you know what, let me just play the audio for you. I really can't describe it and I'm not gonna do it justice. It's gonna blow your mind. Go have something out for you. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great, thanks. Great, have a great day, bye. 
So yeah, I don't know what kind of black magic Google has at their headquarters that they're using to develop this technology, but that is absolutely insane. Now, I'm sure that they kind of cherry picked the examples they used to the ones that worked out really well, but still, just the fact that it was able to do that in the first place and not sound like the regular crazy robot Google Voice was very impressive. I don't know why they can't have the voice sounding that natural all the time. I'm sure they're gonna be working on that. So I'm really excited to see how that happens. Although, I honestly don't know if I would use that feature because I'd still be worried that something would come up in the conversation that it didn't know how to handle and it would just say something completely stupid and I'd have to like call back. So I don't know, we'll have to see how it progresses. It's not ready yet, but I think they're working on it to release it pretty soon. The next major topic they talked about was Android. So they introduced a lot of new features with the next version of Android. One of these, for example, is adaptive battery. So it's apparently going to be able to, to tell which apps you like to use and when and predict which you're probably gonna need battery for most likely later in the day and then be able to maybe assign some reserve battery to that so if it knows that you like to go running later in the afternoon and that uses a lot of battery maybe it will use less battery in your email or something earlier in the day to save up for that so that seems like the idea there pretty cool and another thing is adaptive brightness so what that will do is instead of just adjusting purely based on the ambient light, it'll also take into account your normal preference for how bright you want the screen and take both of those into account at the same time. So I thought it did that actually before, but maybe I guess it's using AI to better predict it where if you normally like the brightness really bright anyway, it'll keep it bright even after the brightness goes down again later. Also with AI, they wanna be able to predict your actions. So right now, Android has had a feature where it'll basically predict what apps you might wanna use next, but they're introducing predicted actions now where maybe in a search result or something, it'll introduce a so-called slice they're calling that might be from another app. So say you're searching for fastest route between this place and this place, it'll predict, okay, maybe he wants to take a ride with Lyft or something, and then it'll show you an option right there to call a Lyft, for example. So it's gonna be able to kind of predict these actions, not just apps. It'll be able to do the actions within apps specifically. And then they're also adding some simplicity features to Android, just quality of life stuff. So for example, the volume rocker now defaults by just controlling the media volume instead of the ringer. Like if you're going to watch a video and you want to change the volume and it changes the ringer by accident, I actually had to download an entire app that would fix this so you could choose which one the volume rocker did, but now you can do that by default built in. Next up, another big topic with Android that they're talking about is digital well-being. So I guess the idea here is they know that technology is ruining our life, so they kind of want to improve it a little bit. So they're introducing what's called the dashboard in Android, which will basically tell you what apps you're using for how long, so how many times you unlock your phone, how many times you've used this app, that sort of thing. And then they're also allowing developers to link their apps individually into the dashboard so you won't be able to just see the apps in general, but also specific actions and how long you've been doing it within each app, so that's pretty cool. And then another thing is introducing app time limits, so it'll kind of remind you when you've been using an app more than what you want to. It'll say, oh, you're going over your 30 minute time limit you set, and then after that, it'll actually make the icon on the home screen gray to remind you, you've been using this too much today, you better hold back. And then here's another really cool feature is the so-called new wind down mode. And the idea here is you set a bedtime or a certain time of night you wanna get ready to go to bed and stop messing around your phone. It'll actually start and enable do not disturb at that time so you don't get any annoying notifications and it'll also switch the phone to grayscale. So your phone to your brain looks a lot less attractive and you're less likely to just waste time on it when you should be maybe going brush your teeth before going to bed or something. So I think that's a really cool idea and will probably help people 
who tend to just mindlessly go on their phone when they should be doing something else at night. Oh, and finally with Android, here's a cool thing. You can now download very easily the Android P beta. So you know with iPhone, it's actually pretty easy to download the beta program. You just go onto a site, click it to opt in, and then it automatically updates. Same idea here. You can now go on the beta site for Android, opt in, click check for updates, and it'll automatically update you to Android P. And I did it, didn't take long at all. Nothing was ruined in the process. You don't have to like go on your computer, plug it in, load all that nonsense. Super easy now. So all those features were for Android in general. Now we can talk about a few app specific features. So one they talked about was Google Maps and they're kind of introducing more social features into it to kind of, again, predict using AI which places you're more likely to like. So this probably would require that you rate restaurants and stuff, but say you rate a few restaurants really well and then one not really well, it will actually introduce a matching score to tell you uh, this other place you apparently will really like. And then that way you can kind of discover new places that you might like. And then also they're introducing sharing features. So if you and your friends can't decide where to go, you can kind of make a list of places that you'd be willing to go and then share that with friends. And then they could see all those at once instead of having to send a bunch of links. Oh, let's go to this place, this, this place, this place, and click through all of them at once. And finally for Google Maps, here's another really awesome thing they're calling VPS, Visual Positioning System, where basically you can open up the camera and point it around and it'll use kind of like augmented reality to overlay exactly which direction you should be going if you're using the directional map feature or if you want to see which shops are around, it'll actually like overlay the little box to show what restaurant that is. Pretty awesome stuff. That's interesting that they're adding that. Now you may recognize that's a very similar feature to the whole Google Lens thing where you take your camera app out and point at something and it can kind of recognize what it is. But now they're introducing some really awesome features with that. So for example, you can take a picture of a document and it will actually do character recognition in that and you can select text right on the image. You don't have to like load it into an app and convert it to text. It can do all that automatically. You can highlight and search. And then it does also have the ability to convert it to a PDF if you want and uh, change the perspective and fix it so it's like a square. Awesome. And also with Lens, they're gonna be adding real-time Google Lens so you don't have to take a picture anymore. It's literally as you're pointing at something, it instantly starts searching and trying to figure out what the object is and they're adding style match. So it'll not only try to identify exactly what type of object that is, but also other kinds of that object. So if you're looking at a specific lamp, it'll show you other lamps that look a lot like it. Now, it seems like it might just do that naturally just out of not knowing exactly which lamp it is. So I don't know, I guess it's already pretty good at it. Now, the final super awesome topic that they talked about was self-driving cars. And they brought out the CEO of Waymo, which is Google's subsidiary company that is all about self-driving cars. And they talked about how they actually have a fully functional self-driving fleet. So they actually have people who can, in their early rider program, they can call Waymo taxis basically and it will pull up with no driver so it's not like uber or any other self-driving car testing company that has a testing engineer at the wheel they literally are doing this fully featured in certain parts of like phoenix arizona specifically and they're apparently going to be launching this to the public later this year so i don't think uber is going to be very happy about this because obviously they've had a lot of issues even with humans at the wheel supposedly supposed to be able to take over in the case of an issue and they aren't able to always do that. So the fact that Google has this working 100%, at least in some areas, a confined region is pretty awesome. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything that they talked about or at least the best stuff. You guys can let me know what you think down in the comments, which you thought was the favorite. If I didn't talk about something that you think I should have, we can mention that down there. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, as usual, just you know what to do. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.